We often believe we have full control over our minds, directing our thoughts and actions with deliberate intent. However, upon reflection, we realize there are times when we are merely passengers, guided by an internal compass that operates beyond our immediate understanding. Our awareness only reaches the surface, the interface of a complex system fueled by intricate layers of software and hardware that surpass our comprehension. If we don't make an effort to comprehend this internal guidance system, its mechanisms, intended direction, and how to correct its misguided paths, we risk aimlessly wandering and potentially ending up in unremarkable or even catastrophic places. In the realm of human understanding, few minds have delved as deeply into the mysteries of the soul as Carl Jung. A pioneer of psychology, Jung's profound insights into the human psyche continue to shape our understanding of ourselves and the world around us. Born in 1875 in Keswil, Switzerland into a modest family, Jung's father was a rural pastor and his mother experienced depressive episodes and visions of spirits. As an introverted child, Jung found solace in solitude, often immersed in his thoughts and analyzing the adults in his life. His childhood was marked by a deep curiosity and thirst for knowledge. School was distressing for Jung, leading to episodes of fainting as a means to avoid attending. However, with maturity and his father's concern about his future, Jung redirected his energies towards his studies, developing an interest in philosophy and religious studies. Jung chose a different path from his family's religious traditions and pursued medicine at the University of Basel. Later, in 1902, he specialized in psychiatry at the University of Zurich. His career took a significant turn when he began working under Eugène Bleuler, a prominent psychiatrist, before opening his private practice. As Jung's reputation grew, he eventually crossed paths with Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, and the leading psychologist of the time. Their initial encounter in 1907 sparked a deep collaborative friendship characterized by extensive conversations, shared travels, and mutual analysis of dreams and psychological theories. However, their differing views and the mentor-mentee dynamic between them eventually led to a professional and personal rift. Jung's estrangement from Freud in 1913, coupled with the outbreak of World War I in 1914, was a period of intense turmoil and revelation for him. During this time, Jung had a series of vivid and disturbing visions that foretold the devastation of the conflict. These experiences caused him to question his own sanity. However, they also provided him with invaluable insights that deepened his work. Jung introduced us to the idea that our minds are like icebergs. What we see on the surface, our conscious thoughts and feelings, is just a small part of our vast inner world. Beneath the surface lies the unconscious mind, a treasure trove of thoughts, memories, and emotions that we might not even be aware of. But Jung's vision went beyond just personal secrets hidden in the deep. He talked about a collective unconscious, a kind of shared mental library of human experiences and wisdom passed down through generations. Now, you might wonder, why bother with the soul in psychology? Isn't the mind complex enough? Jung believed that the soul is the essence of who we are, connecting us to something larger than ourselves. It's the source of our creativity, intuition, and spiritual yearnings. In a fast-paced world focused on external achievements, taking time to explore our soul reminds us of the deeper aspects of life the parts that give our lives meaning beyond the daily grind. Imagine a world-famous chef who, despite having all the skills and recognition, feels something is missing. Or a software developer who's successful by all accounts but yearns to paint. These feelings, according to Jung, might be the soul's way of saying, there's more to your story. It's a call to explore parts of ourselves that we've neglected or never knew existed. Understanding the unconscious, Jung argued, is key to understanding the vastness of the human soul. The soul isn't just a static entity. It's dynamic, always evolving and seeking expression through our emotions, passions and desires. 
Connecting with our soul helps us find a sense of wholeness and purpose. Ignoring it can leave us feeling lost, as if we're missing out on our true potential. Jung famously said, your vision will become clear only when you look into your own soul. It's about discovering what makes us tick, what drives our passions and what shapes our fears. It's about finding our place in the world and making sense of our experiences. For instance, consider someone who always thought of themselves as purely logical, only to discover a profound emotional response to music. Or someone who, after years in a secure job, decides to follow a long-suppressed dream of starting their own business. These moments of insight often come from looking within, from paying attention to the nudges of our soul. By embracing the journey into our inner world, we open ourselves to new possibilities for growth and understanding. It's about recognizing that each of us has a unique story, shaped by our experiences, dreams, and the hidden parts of our psyche. As we navigate this journey, we might find that our true strength lies in our vulnerability, our creativity, and our willingness to embrace the unknown. Imagine someone who, after years in a conventional career, decides to follow their passion for painting, a leap of faith into the unknown that uncovers a wellspring of creativity and fulfillment. So, let's take a moment to ask ourselves, what parts of my inner world have I not yet explored? What might this journey reveal about my deepest passions, talents, and desires? The answers to these questions can lead to profound changes, not just in how we see ourselves, but in how we live our lives. Jung's exploration didn't stop at the surface. He delved even deeper into the concept of the collective unconscious. According to Jung, our souls are not isolated entities, but rather interconnected with this collective unconscious. He described it as a shared reservoir of symbols and archetypes that are inherited and present in all human beings, regardless of their culture or upbringing. During his travels, Jung noticed recurring motifs such as water, mountains and forests. These natural symbols represent the primal elements that have shaped human existence since ancient times. For instance, the recurring motif of water, often seen in literature and film as a symbol of transformation and renewal underscores its universal significance across various cultures. Jung also explored archetypes, which are universal symbols and patterns of behavior. Examples include the hero, the shadow, and the anima and animus. These archetypes are not just ancient relics. They appear vividly in today's stories and media. Consider the hero archetype, which resonates in our lives through personal ambitions, challenges, and resilience. Take, for example, a young entrepreneur starting a new venture. Despite skepticism and setbacks, they persist, driven by a vision of success and a desire to make a difference. This journey mirrors the hero archetype, transforming challenges into growth opportunities. But the hero's journey is not confined to the realms of entrepreneurship. It plays out in the life of a single parent balancing work and family, showing incredible resilience and strength. It's evident in the stories of individuals advocating for social justice, using their voice to challenge the status quo and inspire change. Countless myths and stories across cultures depict heroes embarking on journeys, facing and overcoming adversity, and discovering their true strength. From ancient myths to modern superhero movies, the hero archetype speaks to a deep-rooted aspect of the human spirit. By identifying with these archetypes in our own lives, we connect with the collective unconscious that Jung described, finding common ground with others across the globe and throughout history. The shadow harbors the aspects of ourselves we'd rather not face, the traits we deem undesirable or negative. Carl Jung highlighted the necessity of acknowledging and integrating the shadow for psychological balance. Consider someone who prides themselves on punctuality and reliability Yet, when faced with an opportunity for a significant career advancement, they begin to arrive late to important meetings or miss deadlines. This form of self-sabotage directly contradicts their self-image, revealing the shadow at work. It might indicate a deep-seated fear of success. Perhaps on some level, they doubt their worthiness for advancement 
or they fear the increased responsibilities and potential for failure that come with the new role. Similarly, imagine an individual who, outwardly, always supports their friends and celebrates their successes. However, they might find themselves undermining these friendships by sharing sensitive information carelessly or by being unexpectedly competitive. This behavior, seemingly out of character, can be a manifestation of the shadow, stemming from unresolved jealousy or insecurity. By recognizing and accepting these shadowy actions instead of dismissing them, individuals can delve into what these behaviors say about their hidden fears, desires, and unmet needs. This introspective journey can lead to a more profound self-awareness and emotional growth, uncovering the reasons behind self-sabotage. Acknowledging and addressing these aspects of the shadow can help prevent such unconscious impulses from derailing one's personal and professional life, paving the way for a more integrated and authentic existence. The anima and animus represent the feminine aspects in men and the masculine aspects in women, respectively, playing crucial roles in our relational dynamics and inner balance of energies. Imagine a person struggling with assertiveness, animus, or empathy anima in their relationships. Through self-reflection, they come to see this imbalance as a disconnection from their counterpart gender archetype. By integrating qualities like assertiveness, traditionally masculine, and empathy, traditionally feminine, they achieve a more harmonious state, enriching both their personal development and their interactions with others. Beyond improving relationships, embracing these archetypes can spark creativity and self-expression as individuals draw on a fuller spectrum of human qualities. Individuation, the journey toward unifying the conscious and subconscious, is central to developing a true, integrated self. This process involves embracing every part of one's personality, including the often ignored shadow. Through individuation, individuals can attain self-realization and a profound sense of completeness. Real-life examples of individuation might include embarking on a new career path that aligns more closely with one's passions, engaging in creative pursuits that express inner truths, or navigating life transitions that prompt self-reassessment and growth. These experiences, while challenging, serve as catalysts for discovering and reconciling the multifaceted nature of the self. Jung's techniques, like dream analysis and active imagination, provide gateways to the unconscious, revealing insights into our inner conflicts, desires, and fears. For instance, a recurring dream of being chased might reflect unresolved issues or fears that need to be faced. Engaging with this imagery through journaling or artistic expression can bring clarity and healing. Synchronicity involves those moments when inside thoughts and the outside world intersect in meaningful ways, such as thinking of an old friend who then contacts you unexpectedly. Carl Jung saw these coincidences not as random events, but as signs pointing to deeper connections and truths. They prompt us to question if these occurrences are gentle nudges from the universe, encouraging us to pay closer attention to the unfolding events in our lives. To engage with synchronicity, practice being mindful and open to the unexpected. Recording these events in a journal can help us understand their significance and how often they occur. Reflecting on the timing and personal relevance of each incident can reveal insights, possibly guiding us toward choices that resonate more deeply with who we are. Jung's approach invites us to consider the links between our inner thoughts and feelings and the external world, hinting at a mysterious yet undeniable connection. Carl Jung embarked on a profound exploration into the unconscious, driven by his quest for meaning and wholeness. Through seminal works like Psychological Types and Man and His Symbols, and the introspective The Red Book, Jung laid the foundations of analytical psychology. His journey, marked by personal struggles and professional controversies, deeply influenced his theories, demonstrating how personal exploration can illuminate professional insights. 
Jung's introduction of concepts such as individuation and the shadow provided a framework for understanding the psyche's complex layers. Individuation refers to the process of becoming fully oneself, embracing all aspects of one's personality, while the shadow encompasses the parts of ourselves we often deny. These ideas have significantly influenced not only psychology, but also spirituality and self-improvement practices. Jung's work was initially met with mixed reactions, seen by some as a visionary bridge between science and mysticism, yet criticized by others as unscientific. Despite this, his theories on the collective unconscious and the process of individuation have left a lasting legacy, enriching fields beyond psychiatry, from art to philosophy, appealing to a wide audience of individuals seeking deeper understanding. For those interested in personal development, Jungian analysis offers tools like dream analysis and archetype exploration to foster introspection and growth. In today's context, engaging with these concepts can be as simple as reflecting on the symbolism in our dreams or recognizing the roles various archetypes play in our personal narratives. To incorporate Jung's insights into personal growth, reflect on dreams. Have you considered what your dreams are trying to tell you? Consider starting a dream journal. Note not just the symbols and themes, but also how you feel within the dream. These feelings can be crucial clues to understanding your unconscious, shedding light on your inner desires and conflicts. Acknowledge the shadow. Think about the aspects of yourself that you're less proud of. Reflecting on these can lead to greater self-awareness and authenticity. For example, let's say you pride yourself on being patient and understanding, yet find yourself snapping at a colleague for a minor mistake. This reaction might reveal a part of your shadow, perhaps an unacknowledged frustration with your own mistakes or a fear of appearing imperfect. Reflecting on and accepting these shadow aspects can lead to deeper self-understanding and more compassionate interactions. Explore personal myths. What stories do you tell yourself about who you are? Consider the story, I'm a private person, I don't like attention, which might be a protective layer shielding you from the vulnerability of being truly seen or known by others. While it's healthy to have boundaries, this belief might limit your openness to forming deeper connections, perhaps out of a fear that closeness could lead to judgment or rejection. This protective stance may prevent you from sharing your ideas or talents with the world, diminishing the richness of your contributions and interactions with others, and potentially sidelining you in moments when your voice and presence could make a significant difference. Understanding your personal myths can reveal paths to transformation. In our lives, each moment of light and shadow, joy and sorrow, creates a story that is uniquely ours. Jung encourages us to look closely at our inner selves, discovering the intricate patterns hidden beneath the surface. As you look into your soul, what truths will you awaken to?